Hey gang, Jamie Dreyer with Overhaul Training here. And the reason for this video is I got a really wonderful question in my inbox this morning in regards to my ulnar nerve entrapment post. So I wanted to share it with you. TS asks, does ulnar nerve entrapment get mistaken for tennis elbow or even rotator cuff pain? I've had pain in these two areas on the same arm for several months that have responded to therapies for those conditions, but has not totally resolved them. Fantastic question. Here we go. First off, no, I don't think ulnar nerve entrapment gets mistaken for those two injuries. But, and I actually touched on this a little bit in my book, Tennis Elbow Treatment, I do believe that neurological impairment, such as what can happen from ulnar nerve entrapment, can lead to an injury like tennis elbow or even a rotator cuff injury. And to go one step further, they can also impair the ability to heal from something like that. Here's why. Let me give you an example. So tennis elbow, right? If you've got a poor nerve signal from the brain down to the muscles that connect to the tendon that is responsible for elbow tendonitis, if there's a poor nerve signal, then that muscle isn't going to be very strong. And if that muscle isn't very strong, then the tendon's not going to be very strong. Because the only reason why your tendon knows to be thick and, and just how thick and durable and, and strong it needs to be is because you're constantly loading it with stimulus. There's tension going through the muscle, which loads the tendon, and it says, hey, dude, we're, this guy's picking up and doing heavy, difficult things. We need to get strong. But if the signal's not there, that's not going to happen. So that's how you can get the injury in the first place, is by having a weak signal, excuse me, and then therefore you go and do your sports and it gets injured. But then when you're also doing your, your flex bar exercise to try and get it to heal, if you still have a poor nerve signal, then you're only gonna be able to do so much of that exercise before the muscle just gets tired and you can't do it, and therefore you're gonna reduce the stimuli to get the tendon to heal. Now. Let's take that to the shoulder. It's a little bit different with shoulder impingement, right? So it's not necessarily about loading the tendon because it's not a, not a tendon injury. But what it is, it's an impingement. And what happens with the shoulder impingement? Generally speaking, pretty simple. When you take your arm up overhead, the top of your, your shoulder over here, which is basically the top part of your scavula, is too high. And when your humerus, your arm bone, comes up, it's pinching the muscles of the rotator cuff between the top of your scapula and your humerus. Now, what should happen when you raise your arm is the muscles that control your scapula should start to depress the scapula, and it pulls it out of the way and gives you this nice glide and keeps you from getting impingement. But what were to happen if the nerve signal to the muscles that depressed your scapula wasn't very good? What if there was a problem with those, that nerve signal? Well. It's not going to move the scapula, and you're going to get an impingement. So great question, because it really opens up a whole other piece of the puzzle here. In my book, I talked about that being one of the reasons why. And since, I actually found a great article in the British Journal of Sports Medicine that backs it all up. So your next question, right, is, cool, well, that's interesting, but what do I do with that? I'll tell you what I do with that. I go to see a chiropractor that actually does muscle testing before the treatment. Muscle testing is essentially you, you put an extremity or some part of your body in a very specific position. It could be the arm, the legs, and that position isolates a specific muscle, and those muscles are innervated by a particular nerve, and they all go to a very specific point in your spinal cord. Now, if there's an impairment along this one particular nerve root, that muscle is going to be weak. So they can test, my chiropractor tests a bunch of different spots, and what comes up weak, he then knows what to address neurologically. Now, I'm not going to get into how he does that, because there's a lot of different ways you could go about it, but let's also recognize that in order to have good function overall for that, that, that muscle to test strong, you need a good nerve signal, you need... Uh, issues with the muscle itself to be cleared up. So if it's loaded with trigger points, adhesions, scar tissue, the muscle can't function very properly because it's stuck in this contracted position and it can't really move. The filaments are stuck. I've talked about this briefly in a lot of my other videos. So you need to, they might be able to go ahead and there and start treating the muscle or part of the restriction could be in the joint, so the bones. If the joint 
is all gummed up and stuck and sludgy. And like my ankle, I've got issues with my ankle. If you're, the joint doesn't move through a full range of motion well, well then the muscle's never gonna get to move through a full range of motion. And then therefore the body's gonna start shutting down and the function isn't gonna be there. So they can address it in a multitude of ways and they all affect each other. We already see how poor nerve signal goes to the, the, the muscle and then that can affect the joint. But if the joint isn't moving properly, then you also see how then the muscle doesn't get to exercise properly. And eventually that can lead to other issues that restrict a good nerve signal. So it's important to have a team and to have this more of like a holistic understanding of how your, your body has to work fluidly as a system in order to have good function and to avoid injury and then to actually fully heal from injury. I'm Jamie Jar with Overhaul Training. Hopefully this hasn't been just a big pile of mumble jumble for you and I've made some sense. If you've got any follow-up questions for me, please feel free to drop it in the comments box. I really like it when you guys whip stuff at me and I gotta try and explain it to you. It's a lot of fun. I'll talk to you guys in the next video. Take care.